Hi everyone, my name is Naomi and I'm a peer educator at UM Dearborn and this is... Uh, my name is Prithvi and I'm a peer educator at UM Dearborn. Yes, and today we are doing a talk on personality disorder awareness. So first we're gonna be doing an overview on what are personality disorders. Um, so first off, a personality is a collection of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and it makes us unique to who we are as a person. Um, but a personality disorder is a mental health condition um, and it includes disruptive patterns of thinking, behavior, mood, uh, and all other things related to your personality that might be differing from other people. Um, and this can cause a lot of uh, distress and impairment in someone's life. And uh, another characteristic of personality disorders is people with them might have trouble relating to those around them. Uh, let's go over types of personality disorders. Uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which is a standard reference uh, publication for recognized mental illness, have organized the 10 types of personality disorders into three main categories uh, and clusters. Um, so there are cluster A, cluster B, and cluster C. Cluster A deals with odd and eccentric, uh, which involves unusual and eccentric think of behaviors. Um, there are like three categories under them, like paranoid personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, and schizotypical um, personality di uh, disorder. So in paranoid uh, personality disorder, the main feature of this condition is paranoia, which is relentless mistrust and suspicion of others without even adequate reason for suspicion. Uh, so uh, people with paranoid uh, personality disorder often believe that others are trying to demean or maybe harm or threaten them. So a uh, person with this disorder mostly search for hidden meaning and hostile intention in everything they do. So uh, there are some signs and symptoms for this, like which involves suspicious, mistrustful, uh, stubbornness, and hypersensitive, or sometimes it's jealous and irritable too. Uh, next, it, uh, next is a schizoid personality disorder. The condition is marked by a consistent pattern of detachment uh, from a general uh, disinterest in pers interpersonal relationships. So people with uh, schizoid or uh, personality disorder have mostly limited range of emotions when interacting with others. People with this disorder are commonly described as loner, sometimes with a solitary interest uh, and occupations and sometimes no friends too. There are some signs and symptoms for this, which involves um, emotionally cold, humanless or maybe introspective or sometimes there are like no desire for enjoyment or a close relationship. Uh, the next uh, is a schizotypal personality disorder um, wherein people with this condition mostly display a consistent pattern of intense discomfort um, with and sometimes limited need of uh, for close relationships, right? So relationship may be hindered by their distorted views of reality, or maybe sometimes it's superstitious or unusual behaviors. Um, there are some signs and symptoms for this as well, like which uh, includes uh, inappropriate uh, effect or uh, social withdrawal, or sometimes it's uh, social isolation or maybe odd beliefs or magical thinking, or maybe sometimes not fitting easily with others. Next slide. Awesome. And then now I'm going to be talking about uh, cluster B of personality disorders. So cluster B is characterized by more dramatic, emotional, and erratic behaviors. Um, and there are four listed here that we have. So the first being antisocial personality disorder, uh, then borderline personality disorder, then uh, histronic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. So when we look at the first one, Antisocial personality disorder. Um, some signs and symptoms are failure to sustain uh, relationships, impulsive actions, lack of guilt, and tendency to cause violence. Um, and people with antipersonal or antisocial personality disorder often show a lack of respect towards others and don't follow socially accepted norms and rules. Um, the person is unable to maintain a consistent, responsible functioning at work and school. Uh, or with, uh, or as being a parent. 
Next, we have borderline personality disorder. So this condition is marked by difficulty with emotional regulation, resulting in low self-esteem, mood swings, impulsive behaviors, and subsequent relationship difficulties. So we also have signs and symptoms listed for this one, which can be unstable relationships, unstable self-image, impulsivity, and unstable emotions. Uh, the next, next one is histrionic personality disorder. Uh, and this is marked by intense, unstable emotions and distorted self-image. Self and signs and symptoms include dramatic emotionality, lack of consideration for others, and attention-seeking behavior. Now, the last one we have for cluster B is narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, and this condition involves a consistent pattern of perceived insuperiority uh, over others and a lack of, of empathy for others. Uh, some signs and symptoms of this one are a lack of empathy, unable to face criticism and arrogance. Uh, next, uh, let's go, go with cluster C. So cluster C uh, personality disorders involve mostly severe, uh, severe anxiety and fear, which includes, uh, there, and there are like three different categories in this, uh, avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compul compulsive personality disorder. So let's go over avoidant personality disorder. So people with this condition have chronic um, feelings of inadequ uh, inadequacy and are highly sensitive of uh, being negatively judged by others, or maybe sometimes they would uh, like to interact with others, but then they tend to avoid social interactions due to intense fear of being rejected. There are some signs and symptoms for it. Um, which includes insecurity, fear of disapproval or rejection, shyness, or willingness to become um, involved with people. Uh, next slide. Next is our dependent personality disorder. So this condition is marked uh, by a constant an excessive need to be cared for uh, by someone else. So it also involves submissiveness and also sometimes a need for constant reassurance and the inability to make decisions, right? So people with a dependent personality disorder often become uh, very close to another person and then again, spend great effort trying to please that person. So uh, they tend to usually uh, display passive and uh, clinging behavior and have fearful a fear of uh, separation too. Uh, there are uh, some signs and symptoms for this, uh, which includes uh, feeling uncomfortable or helplessness sometimes, and then hypersensitivity or um, low self-esteem and lack of self-confidence. Uh, next one is obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Um, this condition is marked by a consistent and extreme need for orderliness or perfectionism, and uh, sometimes control uh, that ultimately uh, slows or interferes with completing a, uh, completing a task. Right, so um, it also um, interfere with relationships sometimes. So uh, uh, which uh, there are some signs and symptoms which includes perfectionism and high standards or uh, feeling of excessive um, doubt and caution. Um, and uh, this is definitely a separate condition from obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, which is classified as an anxiety um, a disorder. But then uh, while some people with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, usually uh, are aware that OCD is causing their behavior and they sometimes they even accept the need to change. But people with OCPD, uh, that is obsessive uh, compulsive personality disorder, uh, usually have little or sometimes uh, little self awareness of their behaviors. So yeah, people might definitely have mixed symptoms of more than one personality disorder too. Next slide. Awesome, and then now we're gonna talk about some misconceptions with personality disorders. So there's definitely more misconceptions than what we have here, but these are just some big three to go over. So the first one is everyone with personality disorders are manipulative. Um, so this is definitely not true. Uh, while they might have some manipulative behaviors, uh, oftentimes they're unaware that they're doing this to other people around them. Uh, and furthermore, this can be treated and helped uh, through therapy and things like that. And also, not all personality disorders have a symptom of having manipulative behavior. The second one is people with personality disorders cannot live a fulfilling life. Uh, this is also untrue. Um, people with personality disorders can get treatment for their conditions, uh, such as therapy, support groups, medications, um, which can help them live a fulfilling life. Uh, also, some people 
have personality disorders that aren't as severe. Um, and so this, this may not impact their life as much compared to other people. And then the third one is only medication can help individuals with personality disorders. Uh, again, there's an arrange, uh, array of treatments that people with personality disorders can have, uh, such as therapy or support groups, and medication is not the only answer to this. So uh, if you are a person with personality disorder and uh, you hear info that medication is the only way you can get help, but you don't have access to medication, this might discourage you from getting help. Uh, so it's important to know that there are other treatments available for you with personality disorders, uh, such as therapy and support groups. Awesome. So now let's go uh, over what causes personality disorders, right? Um, so uh, personality disorders are uh, definitely among the least understood mental health conditions. So researchers are still trying to figure out the cause for them. So, uh, so far, uh, they believe that uh, there are some uh, following factors that may contribute to the development of personality disorders, which includes genetics, right? So researchers have identified that um, malfunctioning gene, uh, that may be a factor in obsessive compulsive uh, personality disorder, but then uh, they're also exploding genetics like aggression, anxiety, and fear, which are seriously or uh, definitely a traits that can play a role in personality disorders. Next is brain changes. Uh, researchers have identified the subtle brain differences in people with certain personality disorders, right? So we can see some changes, the way they behave and the way, the way they act. Uh, next is childhood trauma. Uh, trauma. So uh, one study uh, revealed that there's a link between childhood traumas and also the development of personality disorders. People with a borderline, a borderline personality disorders, um, for example, sometimes uh, they've, have, uh, they've had uh, especially high rates of childhood uh, sexual trauma, or maybe sometimes people with a borderline and anti-social uh, personality disorders have issues with intimacy and trust. So uh, both of which uh, may be related to uh, childhood uh, abuse and trauma. Right, next, um, verbal abuse. So um, in some studies, uh, people have experienced verbal abuse as children uh, were, uh, were uh, three times likely to have borderline narcissistic or maybe obsessive compulsive or paranoid personality disorders in adulthood. Uh, next is a uh, cultural factor. So uh, sometimes cultural factors may also play a role in development of personality disorders, right? So um, as demonstrated by the uh, varying rates of personality disorders, with, definitely between countries. Uh, so sometimes definitely a combination of these factors can also result in a personality disorder. Uh, many have linked uh, to a traumatic um, event or even experience early in life. Next. Uh, and now that is the uh, ending to our presentation, but we do have resources here for anyone who needs them. Uh, and again, peer mentors work for CAPS, which is the Counseling and Psychological Services on campus. So we have the website here for CAPS, uh, an email address you can use, and several programs such as the Wellness Committee, Peer Mentors, which is us, Clinical Services, and more. And uh, if you are a student at UM Dearborn, you can get uh, free therapy as long as you email CAPS and they will get you started with that. And there's also group therapy available as well. So thank you for listening to our presentation and have a good day. Thank you and have a good day.